Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Anisia Antoine. This edition's top stories. The fluid nature of the COVID-19 pandemic has resulted in the revision of St. Lucia's travel bubble. The St. Lucia Tourism Authority is laser-focused on maintaining the island's competitive edge. And preparations are ongoing for the opening of the new academic year. The fluid nature of the COVID-19 pandemic has resulted in the revision of St. Lucia's travel bubble. Two Caribbean countries have been removed from the bubble, Guyana and Trinidad and Tobago, due to the increase in cases of COVID-19. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmer-George says the revision is aimed at keeping St. Lucians safe. The travel bubble, she noted, must consist of countries with low to zero cases of COVID. More now from Jesse Leos. After two more COVID-19 related deaths in Trinidad and Tobago and a steady increase in cases this past week, the Twin Island state has been struck off St. Lucia's list of designated travel bubble countries in the Caribbean. Daily, Trinidad and Tobago has recorded new patients by double digits. This week alone, officials there recorded over 200 new cases. In an update to the nation on Wednesday, 19th August 2020, officials in St. Lucia made the announcement. The revised list also excludes Guyana. Guyanese health officials reported 14 new cases and four COVID-19 related deaths as of Wednesday. Travelers from bubble countries are currently the only arrivals exempt from quarantine in St. Lucia once they present a negative COVID-19 test result. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar-George explains the vetting of bubble countries. We are monitoring all of the islands and we look at the last seven days. We use three um, indicators when we assess the bubble islands. We look at the, the number of cases, the number of new cases of COVID-19 within the last seven days. We look at the incidence of disease of COVID-19, that is number of new cases per 100,000 in the population. And we also look at the traje tra trajectory. If they're increasing, if they're decreasing, or if they're stable. And it gives, an, an, it gives us an idea of the level of risk um, to our to our island of them coming in because the bubble countries they come in with a they need to come in with a negative test but they're exempt from the quarantine so we have to ensure that the the level of risk is low enough to allow that that possibility after the latest review the government of saint lucia has identified the following countries that present a low risk of transmission of covid 19 as a designated travel bubble antigua and barbuda anguilla barbados Bonaire, British Virgin Islands, Curaçao, Dominica, Grenada, Monstrat, St. Barthelemy, St. Kitts and Nevis, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. In this week's update, health officials also re-emphasized the importance of the 14-day quarantine for travelers outside this bubble, as demonstrated by the latest case of COVID-19 in St. Lucia. Patient 26, a 32-year-old female, arrived in country on 9th August with a negative test result from New York City. As per our protocol, she was placed in institutional quarantine at one of our public health facilities. And we have instituted a measure where after seven days, we do the PCR testing again. Um, on the 16th, um, she was tested positive. We got that result on the, on the 17th, tested positive. Um, for COVID-19. So that being said, it gives the importance of persons who are either in institutional quarantine or in home quarantine, the importance of ensuring you adhere to that protocol where you stay in. Um, what if this was somebody on home quarantine who after seven days decided to go out? It means that there would be a possibility of, of community spread at that, at that point. Another measure to minimize the risk of possible COVID-19 transmission to local communities is the restriction of local guests at hotels. Locals are not permitted at hotels where visitors from international markets are allowed to stay. They must utilize properties certified for the travel bubble. It is to reduce the, the contact of um, persons coming in who are still within that 14-day period and causing some level of transmission within the communities. So it is extremely important they are uh, certified. There are other um, villas and guest houses that can be used for, for staycations and for persons within the bubble. It is important that we maintain that level of, of separation at this point because the level of risk um, for introduction is still there. 
The public is also reminded that permission must be obtained from the relevant authorities for mass crowd events. While permitted, such activities are restricted to 200 persons who are encouraged to keep a safe distance. For the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leons reporting. The St. Lucia Tourism Authority's response to COVID-19 is being driven by the important need to ensure that the local tourism sector does not collapse under the strain of the pandemic. The Chief Executive Officer spoke on the efforts during a panel discussion on NTN Wednesday evening. The impact of COVID-19 on the tourism sector has been devastating, with some 14,000 St. Lucians who earn their livelihood from the travel and hospitality sectors on the breadline. Since the decision was taken to open the borders on July 9, the tourism hospitality sector has been slowly coming to life. To date, 2,000 tourism employees have returned to work. The agency responsible for marketing St. Lucia as a tourism destination has ramped up efforts to ensure that the island maintains its competitive edge despite the COVID-19 pandemic. Beverly nicholson Dotti is the Chief Executive Officer of the St. Lucia Tourism Authority. We really have had to be laser focused during this period in ensuring that we did two things. Uh, making sure that St. Lucia remained top of mind in all of our core markets, uh, the UK, Canada, uh, the US and the Caribbean. But in addition to that, we've had to be uh, implement those uh, messages that tell about the fact that we want to be responsible in our reopening process. And so it has been twofold, making sure that St. Lucia is still the number one destination to visit, but also conveying just how important it is for us to have uh, health and safety procedures. With the drastic revenue loss for central government, the Tourism Authority, as with all other departments, has had to review its budget. The CEO says the SLTA has been creative in using all social media platforms. Uh, starting with seven minutes in St. Lucia, which was widely uh, popular, uh, moving on to our featuring of St. Lucia, St. Lucia authors, uh, looking at how we use limited digital marketing dollars to get the most bang for our buck. Um, and we've also been uh, just really out there in terms of public relations. We've had over 600 articles, stories placed about St. Lucia in the last uh, five months. If we have to pay for that coverage, it would be almost uh, US $5 million. So we've been come, become even more creative in terms of getting our messaging out. A critical component to sustaining a successful reopening of the tourism sector is airlift. Mrs. Doty says the airlines are increasingly returning to the local skies. Based on the, the maintaining of our relationships with the airlines, we're pleased to say that on a weekly basis, we have um, two flights from the UK, British Airways. We have 11 flights a week out of the US. And out of the Caribbean, um, we have uh, over 700 seats per week. So. In total, we're looking at 2,500 seats a week uh, right now coming into St. Lucia, and we are gearing up our marketing efforts, uh, understanding that as more hotels open uh, come this fall, that you know airlift is a priority, and making sure that we uh, maintain and grow that airlift uh, throughout the season. Chief Executive Officer of the St. Lucia Tourism Authority, Beverly nicholson Dotty. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. Meantime, operations at the Uranora International Airport have been adjusted to comprehensively respond to COVID-19. Airport manager Edgar Steven says the established protocols have been incorporated into all aspects, including customs and immigration, port health, ports police and airline staff. This has included structural, structural Im implementation of um, checkpoints, the health facility. It has also meant um, new rules on wearing of PPEs and also how we facilitate, how we move people through the space. So overall, we've had to change how we do things at UNR. COVID has taught us um, collaboration. Um, 
we've had to collaborate both outside, um, of course, Ministry of Tourism, um, Ministry of Health, um, the CMO. Um, we've also had to work with events in Lucia. So for SLASPA, working with um, other agencies on the outside, it has been um, a real learning process in terms of working outside. But also within the, the, airport, um, the airport, we've had to realign or, or rework the way we do things. Um, usually it had become a norm for different agencies to work to work in, in more or less a bonker sort of um, mindset. Um, immigration does what immigration does, customs does what customs does. But COVID-19 has made us come together a lot more in terms of facilitating. So from the landing and positioning of a plane and moving the client across to when we actually put them on a taxi, we've had to work a lot closer, a lot, like, as I like to say, one various units, but one operation. So we've definitely had to work a lot closer with each other. The health facility set up at HIA, Mr. Steven says, augurs well with the management of travelers, as well as the safety of staff. This has added another facet to what we do and another component to how we would usually facilitate. It, it, it has meant that um, the client would take more time moving through the space. Um, also, it, it would have mean, meant that we need to communicate more. Um, the operation would have to be more, it has become more complex. You have various people coming to St. Lucia to do various things and they would be placed in different categories in the health facility. Also, the nurses, um, the frontline people would have various challenges as, as the, the operation goes. So um, the health facility has added um, more complexity to how we do things. Airport manager at the Uranora International Airport, Edgar Steven. Preparations are ongoing for the opening of the new academic year, beginning September 7th. Lisa Joseph reports. The Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations has been intently laying the groundwork for the commencement of the new academic year in September. The efforts have been more deliberate given the impact of COVID-19. Several meetings were held with various stakeholders, including the Senusha Teachers Union, the National Principals Association, the National Youth Council, the National Students Council, school boards, teachers and principals to decide upon the best path to the reopening. Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer is the Chief Education Officer. The reopening of school is nothing that we take lightly. And so the first course of action was to get confirmation through the Department of Health and in particular from the office of the Chief Medical Officer saying to us that a proposed reopening as of the 7th of September for children and the 31st of August for teachers is a possibility that we've been working towards and we continue to engage our stakeholders, hopefully with the best possible program for our children who've been out of school since March for the most part, except our grade six and our form fives. Dr. Meyer says the department notes the public concern about the health and safety of students amid the threats of COVID-19. However, the chief education officer says the Ministry of Health has been directing education officials with establishing the protocols needed to protect students, teachers, and ancillary staff at all schools. The phased reopening in June for the common entrance and CSEC examinations, she said, tested the system. That system, Dr. Meyer added, has been reviewed and fine-tuned. Through the Environmental Health Unit, we've had the team at our schools, going through our schools to make sure that the proposals that we've looked at is up to standard and that we have gotten feedback from them as to the possible way forward. As a proposed date for the reopening of school draws near, Dr. Meyer is employing parents and guardians to ensure that they take advantage of all avenues of assistance available to them through the Department of Education, including the bursary for students entering secondary schools. And as we speak, District um, 3 is being subsidized now and it's been rolled out in all of the districts and it will be rolled out in the ones that haven't gone through it. We appreciate that every little bit counts and that this support to families, to parents, will go towards helping our children transition from grade six into form one. 
On Monday, 24th August 2020, a comprehensive discussion on the new academic year will be broadcast live on the National Television Network and partner stations. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. The Ministry of Health and Wellness continues to receive donations from various organizations to assist frontline workers in the fight against COVID-19. More in this report from Fanel Neptune. The Ministry of Health recently received the donation of personal protective equipment, PPEs, and medical supplies from the Coca-Cola Foundation through the St. Lucia Red Cross. President of the St. Lucia Red Cross, Hubert Pierce, says, as part of its mandate, his organization felt it was necessary to assist in St. Lucia's response to COVID-19 and hence the need to source support from outside agencies. The Coca-Cola Foundation did make some money available to us so that we could purchase some things or a few materials in the fight against COVID. And today, I am extremely happy that through the efforts of the Coca-Cola Foundation and that of the Red Cross, we will be giving to the Ministry of Health 30 gallons of hand sanitizer, 200 gallons of bleach, 1,000 face masks, and 15,000 gloves to enable them in the fight against the COVID. Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Glensford Joseph, express gratitude to the St. Lucia Red Cross for the efforts in providing supplies which will assist St. Lucia's response and management of COVID-19. The St. Lucia Red Cross saw it fit to contribute again to this COVID-19 response through the donation of personal protective equipment that are going to be very vital to ensure our frontline workers are able to face the continuous and evolving threat of COVID-19. Moreover, as pointed out, we need a very clean environment in which we conduct our activities. And with this, the cleaning agent provided by the St. Lucia Red Cross is going to go a very long way in ensuring that our cleaners are able to provide us with the environment in which we can conduct our business of managing COVID-19. The Ministry of Health received the donation of hand sanitizers, face masks, gloves and bleach. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Novella Quayol. The Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment wishes to notify all clients of the Public Assistance Program from Castries, Babuno, Grosile, and Susi Millet regions that payment for the month of July has commenced. On Thursday, August 20th to Friday, August 21st, 2020, payments will be made at the various locations from 9 a.m. daily. For further information, please contact the Ministry at telephone number 468-5108-CASTRIS or 454-6478-BFO. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Quayol. Monsieur Tan Anessia, Monsieur Madame, Département qui n'est pas responsable pour formation à gouvernement cette ci GIS, et Télévision Nationale pour la NTN, Capozato Nouvelle à Quayol. Monsieur Tan, Primus Hutchinson. Il y a un arrangement spécial pour les résidents caribla voyager. Pour les connexions et puis la famille, les amis, et bien pour Ani, et bien aussi Chen Antivacas, ça c'est le ci. Ça y est, l'homme publication, j'ai trouvé huit visées par les autorités touristiques, c'est le ci. Yo qui a visité ces pays là qui désigné à bas arrangement et qui aussi ni ont l'histoire qu'à voyager pour dernier 21 jours qu'à entrer en quarantaine, mais ce faut y ni un test qui a montré qu'il est négatif. 
pas plus que sept jours avant de te voyager. La caïni pour ni passer, yo caïni pour passer l'examination après yo débattre un pays. Bon, pour faire assurer que cette ici reste qu'en destination, ça ne sort. En réponse pour maladie corona, arrangement voyage bubble ça là, j'ai trouvé y réviser encore encore depuis il était fait le 7 août. J'ai eu des relations publiques à l'autorité des affaires touristiques, cette ci Jorin Georges, noté qui, après un pile d'examination été faite par le ministère de la Santé, il a décidé pour tuer cinq pays à bas le programme Bobla. Selon officier médical de santé, Dr. Glenford Joseph, il déclarait que ces pays à ces Bahamas, Jamaïque, Ruba, ce matin et Bermuda. Dr. Joseph ajoutait que ministère servi yon misi ki twe direct pou te determine si yon pays mérité pou opwe an ba program bubble autorité des affaires touristiques lan cette ici remarqué ki santé et protection les citoyens cette ici et les communes c'est ça qui est plus important pour yo lan yon appel hard organisation de santé pan american ça c'est pa ho pou placer plus importance et l'intérêt en service santé du la maladie corona pour moun ki ka souffè et puis maladie sévère et ça c'est direct par au Chris Etienne qui fait suggestion ça là selon docteur Etienne maladie corona j'a une cause une mauvaise situation de maladie sévère en région des gwe qui a jamais été fait avant et ça c'est en tout pays la terre et ça ka placer santé sévère d'ailleurs haute nécessité à présent directeur a couyé à sur tout pays pour plus vite que possible pour essayer adresser maladie sévère santé qui ensemble et puis violence domestique j'avais nécessité si tellement critique au résultat pandémie ça là docteur Antienne note que maladie corona a touché presque 11 millions et tué plus que 400000 monde maladie corona a aussi affecté travail santé qui a placé la vie même en risque et qu'après plusieurs mois en bas pèse maladie ça là qu'a pour tuer service santé Yo même j'ai commencé à sentir affectement et lassitude en résultat pèse contre maladie. Directeur Paro a commandé pour les autorités employer plus de personnel professionnel santé pour continuer faire bataille contre maladie corona et aussi pour abattre le problème de santé sévère qui ça a une cause qui ça a une cause aussi. Docteur Étienne dit que Paro a assisté divers pays pour renforcer web et service pour assister à adresser la pandémie. Là. Particulièrement, la famille, à présent, passe à ni contact et puis même la famille qui part et puis elle est là parce qu'elle est dans la quarantaine, elle est dans l'autre pays, elle est pour ça voyager, elle est dans le monde, passe à trouver des gros services, elle est libérée. Elle est dans le monde qui a une pièce de support, elle est côté pour trouver le support. Alors, si l'on a un directeur par roi, il faut l'année en plus fort en et faut en place pour courager et soulager la situation ça là particulièrement les venir pour maladie sévère moun qui teste positif et puis maladie sévère pas qu'à ni son mai yo pas yo ka tomber en chagrin yo ni en l'opérez a pas mis plusieurs autres problèmes bureau d'éducation santé qu'a fait public la changer ça yo supposé et pas supposé fait devant temps yo en quarantaine en caillou ça c'est un caillou même ça ça dit après les autorités tenir pour forcer 17 lycéens en quarantaine en facilité gouvernement parce qu'ils ont pas suivre et obéir aux pour rester en quarantaine en caillou même éducateur des affaires la famille exacté Naomi Grandison dit que ouais de 14 jours en quarantaine pas qu'à changer exacté ça c'est loi qui tout le monde qui voyage sortir l'autre pays obligé respecter Devant une discussion à ce moment, Grandison a forcé point pour les gens qui sont en quarantaine, à Kai, pour obliger à suivre tout protocole et pour respecter les restrictions pour ne pas encourager l'autre monde pour visiter au devant de temps. C'est là que Grandison a découvert qu'il y a des gens qui sont en quarantaine, à Kai, pour ne pas suivre ces règles qui sont en place. Alors, commencez immédiatement. Les autorités ont placé plus fort règles pour les gens qui en quarantaine, à Kai, même et dit que personne yo bouché ka aller contre ces règles là ka trouver yo immédiatement à d'ailleurs facilité quarantine gouvernement et en bas loi pays police ni doit pour enforcer 
compliance. Exekosa no watu wa botu novela mi semana moka mesi o ta foka gade moka ba ngi vitasio pu shire pi moka osi de konsa bela vi anya ku sa to lot novel a ku yo la pu sa moka vi pu sa to anisio. Messi appeal primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Anisia Antoine.